And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they bring me an offering of every man that giveth it willingly with his heart, ye shall take my offering. And this is the offering which ye shall take of them, gold and silver and brass, and blue and purple and scarlet, and fine linen and goat's hair, and ram's skins dyed red, and badger's skins and shittim wood, oil for the light, spices for anointing oil, and for sweet incense, onyx stones and stones to be set in the ephod and in the breastplate. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them, according to all that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. And they shall make an ark of shittim wood. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold, within and without shalt thou overlay it, and shall make upon it a crown of gold around about. And thou shalt cast four rings of gold for it, and put them in the four corners thereof, and two rings shall be in the one side of it, and two rings in the other side of it. And thou shalt make staves of shittim wood, and overlay them with gold. And thou shalt put the staves into the rings by the sides of the ark, that the ark may be borne with them. The staves shall be in the rings of the ark, they shall not be taken from it. And thou shalt put into the ark the testimony which I shall give thee. And thou shalt make a mercy seat of pure gold. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof. And thou shalt make two cherubins of gold, of beaten work shalt thou make them, in the two ends of the mercy seat. And make one cherub on the one end, and the other cherub on the other end. Even of the mercy seat shall ye make the cherubims on the two ends thereof. And the cherubims shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings, and their faces shall look one to another. Toward the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherubims be. And thou shalt put the mercy seat above upon the ark, and in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee. And there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims which are upon the ark of the testimony, of all things which I will give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. Thou shalt also make a table of shittim wood, two cubits shall be the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold, and make thereto a crown of gold round about. And thou shalt make unto it a border of an handbreadth round about, and thou shalt make a golden crown to the border thereof round about. And thou shalt make for it four rings of gold, and put the rings in the four corners that are on the four feet thereof. Over against the border shall the rings be for places of the staves to bear the table. And thou shalt make the staves of shittim wood, and overlay them with gold, that the table may be born with them. And thou shalt make the dishes thereof, and spoons thereof, and covers thereof, and bowls thereof, to cover with all. Of pure gold shalt thou make them. And thou shalt set upon the table showbread before me always. And thou shalt make a candlestick of pure gold, Of beaten work shall the candlestick be made, his shaft and his branches, his bowls, his knobs and his flowers shall be of the same, and six branches shall come out of the sides of it, three branches of the candlestick out of the one side, and three branches of the candlestick out of the other side, three bowls made like unto almonds, with a knob and a flower in one branch, and three bowls made like almonds in the other branch, with a knob and a flower, so in the six branches that come out of the candlestick. And in the candlestick shall be four bowls made like unto almonds, with their knobs and their flowers. And there shall be a knob under two branches of the same, and a knob under two branches of the same, and a knob under two branches of the same, according to the six branches that proceed out of the candlestick. Their knobs and their branches shall be of the same. All it shall be one beaten work of pure gold. And thou shalt make the seven lamps thereof, and they shall light the lamps thereof that they may give light over against it, and the tongs thereof, and the snuff-dishes thereof, shall be of pure gold. Of a talent of pure gold shall he make it with all these vessels. And look that thou make them after their pattern which was shown thee in the mount.
Leviticus 4. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a soul shall sin through ignorance against any of the commandments of the Lord, concerning things which ought not to be done, and shall do against any of them, if the priest that is anointed do sin according to the sin of the people, then let him bring for his sin which he hath sinned, a young bullock without blemish unto the Lord for a sin offering. And he shall bring the bullock unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord, and shall lay his hand upon the bullock's head, and kill the bullock before the Lord. And the priest that is anointed shall take of the bullock's blood, and bring it to the tabernacle of the congregation. And the priest shall dip his finger in the blood, and sprinkle of the blood seven times before the Lord, before the veil of the sanctuary. And the priest shall put some of the blood upon the horns of the altar of sweet incense before the Lord, which is in the tabernacle of the congregation, and shall pour all the blood of the bullock at the bottom of the altar of the burnt offering, which is at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he shall take off from it all the fat of the bullock for the sin offering, the fat that covereth the inwards, and all the fat that is upon the inwards, and the two kidneys, and the fat that is upon them, which is by the flanks, and the call above the liver with the kidneys, it shall he take away, as it was taken off from the bullock of the sacrifice of peace offerings, and the priest shall burn them upon the altar of the burnt offering. And the skin of the bullock and all his flesh, with his head and with his legs and his inwards and his dung, even the whole bullock shall he carry forth without the camp unto a clean place, where the ashes are poured out, and burn him on the wood with fire, where the ashes are poured out shall he be burnt. And if the whole congregation of Israel sin through ignorance, and the thing be hid from the eyes of the assembly, and they have done somewhat against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which should not be done, and are guilty, when the sin which they have sinned against it is known, then the congregation shall offer a young bullock for the sin, and bring him before the tabernacle of the congregation. And the elders of the congregation shall lay their hands upon the head of the bullock before the Lord, and the bullock shall be killed before the Lord. And the priest that is anointed shall bring of the bullock's blood to the tabernacle of the congregation. And the priest shall dip his finger in some of the blood, and sprinkle it seven times before the Lord, even before the veil. And he shall put some of the blood upon the horns of the altar which is before the Lord, that is, in the tabernacle of the congregation, and shall pour out all the blood at the bottom of the altar of the burnt offering, which is at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he shall take all his fat from him, and burn it upon the altar. And he shall do with the bullock as he did with the bullock for a sin offering. So shall he do with this. And the priest shall make an atonement for them, and it shall be forgiven them. And he shall carry forth the bullock without the camp, and burn him as he burned the first bullock. It is a sin offering for the congregation. When a ruler hath sinned, and done somewhat through ignorance against any of the commandments of the Lord his God, concerning things which should not be done, and is guilty, or if his sin, wherein he hath sinned, come to his knowledge, he shall bring his offering, a kid of the goats, a male without blemish. And he shall lay his hand upon the head of the goat, and kill it in the place where they killed the burnt offering before the Lord. It is a sin offering. And the priest shall take of the blood of the sin offering with his finger, and put it upon the horns of the altar of burnt offering, and shall pour out his blood at the bottom of the altar of burnt offering. And he shall burn all his fat upon the altar, as the fat of the sacrifice of peace offerings. And the priest shall make an atonement for him as concerning his sin, and shall be forgiven him. And if any one of the common people sin through ignorance, while he doeth somewhat against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which ought not to be done, and be guilty, or if his sin, which he hath sinned, come to his knowledge, then he shall bring his offering, a kid of the goats, a female without blemish, for his sin, which he hath sinned. And he shall lay his hand upon the head of the sin offering, and slay the sin offering in the place of the burnt offering. And the priest shall take of the blood thereof with his finger, and put it upon the horns of the altar of burnt offering, and shall pour out all the blood thereof at the bottom of the altar. 
and he shall take away all the fat thereof, as the fat is taken away from off the sacrifice of peace offerings. And the priest shall burn it upon the altar for a sweet savour unto the Lord. And the priest shall make an atonement for him, and it shall be forgiven him. And if he bring a lamb for a sin offering, he shall bring it a female without blemish. And he shall lay his hand upon the head of the sin offering, and slay it for a sin offering in the place where they kill the burnt offering. And the priest shall take of the blood of the sin offering with his finger, and put it upon the horns of the altar of burnt offering, and shall pour out all the blood thereof at the bottom of the altar. And he shall take away all the fat thereof, as the fat of the lamb is taken away from the sacrifice of the peace offerings. And the priest shall burn them upon the altar according to the offerings made by fire unto the Lord. And the priest shall make an atonement for his sin that he hath committed, and it shall be forgiven him. Okay, okay. Notice, fat is a symbol of sin, as we brought out earlier. Fat is a symbol of what? Of sin. And what is sin? First John 3, 4. Whosoever, trans whosoever sin transgresses also the law. For sin is a, it's sin is a transgression of the law. I want you to notice that very carefully. Amen. Notice, whosoever committed what? Sin. Transgresses the also the law. So sin, when I break the law, sin is now part of me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When I break the law, mm -hmm. sin is become part of me. Mm -hmm. Are y'all with me now? Yes, sir. Miss it. So now, unless I quickly put away my sin, mm -hmm. confess and forsake my sin, mm -hmm. the sin is part of me. Mm -hmm. Now, the longer I continue to hold on to my sin, making excuses or blaming other people for it, mm. the longer the sin begins to develop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It begins to expand yes. mm -hmm. and begins to even root like a cancer. It begins to expand and sometimes it can hide itself. Mm. It can even be broken off into different pieces. Are y'all with me now? Amen. Won't you understand? Amen. A lot of times we don't want to always confess our sins or we want to blame somebody for the sin. Lord, I wouldn't have done that if it wasn't for... And she said, and he did, and that's why I, and I know I was wrong, but... No buts. Thank you. You're wrong, you're wrong. Just say you're wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. Amen. Pride forbids you to say what you're supposed to say. I made a mistake. Oh, I didn't do that. Oh, yes, I'm, I'm sorry. We have a hard time with that for some reason. But the Bible said pride brought before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. And the longer we hold on to the pride, the more haughty we become. Sometimes it's imperceptibly haughty, and we don't even realize it. We just think we're talking normal. And somebody else said, what's wrong with that person? They can got an arrogant, arrogant attitude. Listen carefully. We're talking about this issue because in Exodus chapter 29, verse 13, and thou shalt take all the fat and cover the inward parts, the call and above. Now he's talking about the fat. Where is the fat at? In the inward parts, in the call and in the liver. Have mercy. Oh boy, this is an anatomy physiology class if y'all were really looking at that. Uh, if, your fat, if fat is in the liver, what does that mean? What, what do you call that in anatomy? A uh, fatty liver. And what, what will a fatty liver do to you? It will kill you. That's right. I want you to understand. I want you to, want you to, listen. I want you to think about it carefully. Why, do, why you understand the wages of sin is what? Death. Death. It will kill you. A fatty liver will augment your liver. The fat will get around that liver. Fat around the heart tissues can cause you to have a stroke. Are you with me now? And sometimes we're having strokes in sin, and we don't realize we're having the strokes. You know they have these things called silent strokes that can take place, brain strokes that take place. I think some of us are having brain strokes taking place and we don't even realize what's happening to us. We're getting bent out of shape, becoming highly sensitive people. We can't do anything without somebody just, you know, it used to be a time when you could talk and say certain things and people just, oh, oh no problem, okay. Now you say something out the way and people look at you like, talking to me like that? Mm How -hmm. dare? What? what? I mean, you're like walking on eggshells in, in, the, in the church now. Not because you try not to offend nobody, because you're like, what? Well, I, I just said something that I normally say, and they took it, from, they just took it all out of context. Mm, thank you. 
What's going on is that you got a problem with sin. People are holding on to sin and fat is developing around their tissues, around the heart of their brain because they're holding on to sin. They refuse to confess and forsake the sin. The sin is spreading through the mind and heart like cancer. And it's starting to spread in such a way as it affects their thinking. It affects their interpretation of words as being said. It affects, and the devil brings on the temptation to add insult to injury by making you, making that person not quite understand what you meant. Mm -hmm. You want to understand? It says here, and the two kidneys and the fat is there, is, is upon him upon them and burn them at the, uh, it says upon the altar. No, the fat was burned at the, upon the what everybody? Altar. The altar. It says in Isaiah 43, 23, and thou shalt bring, it says here, and thou shalt, thou has not brought me. I want to show you that fat is sin. It says here, thou has not brought me the small cattle of thy burnt offerings. Neither has thou honored me with the, thy sacrifices. I have not caused thee to serve, it says here, I have not caused thee to serve with an offering, it says, and weary thee with incense. People are praying, but they're not putting away sin. Thank you. So incense is a symbol of prayer. prayer. If you don't believe it, go to Psalms 141, 1 and 2 yes, with me, yes. so you can see it. Psalms 141, mm -hmm. verses 1 and 2. Notice what the Bible says in Psalms 141, verses 1 and 2. The Bible says here, looking a little closer, it says, Lord, I cried unto thee, make haste unto me, give ear unto my voice when I cry unto thee. Let my prayer, let my, what everybody, my let my prayer. prayer be, bring forth before thee as incense, and I lifted up my hand as an evening sacrifice. Notice very carefully, so God is saying, you're praying, but you're not bringing your offering. You're praying. But you're not giving me your whole, you're not giving me a living sacrifice. You're praying, but you're not sacrificing. You're praying, but you're not denying yourself. You're praying, and you're thinking about your own convenience at times when my work is at stake. My work in your character, my work for your work, the very work I called you to do on earth. And you put it last, and you don't make it first. You don't make it, you don't, you don't value it as sacred. You're praying, but you don't offer sacrifice. You're, and, but you're not making sacrifices. You're going to church, and you're sitting in pews. You listen to present truth, but you won't act on it, and you don't make a sacrifice for it. And so therefore, God says here, Thou hast not brought me small cattle of thy burnt offering, neither hast thou honored me with thy sacrifices. I have not caused thee to serve with an offering, nor weary thee with incense. Listen, thou hast brought me no sweet cane with money, neither hast thou filled me with the fat of thy sacrifices. Now, most of the time, people think about fat as prosperous. In the Bible, fat can be used in different ways. And so fat can also mean the wicked stand out fat. They mean they're prosperous at the same time. At the same time, fat, though in this case, is a symbol of sin. And God is saying, you're, not, you're, you're praying, you're wearying me with your incense and your prayers, but at the same time, you're not making sacrifices, and nor are you bringing your sins to me. Won't you get the point? You're hiding your sins. You're making excuses for them. And you won't do what I told you. But it says here, watch this now. But thou hast made me. Now this is God talking now. Because you won't sacrifice, you won't make a sacrifice. But you want to pray. And you want God to be with you. And you want God to give you a blessing. And you want God to do all these things for you. But yet at the same time it says here, it says, but thou hast made me serve. God, in other words, you made God because you won't put away your sins. You won't put away those issues in your character. You won't correct your defects. God says, as a result, thou has made me serve with thy sins. Who's serving with thy sins? God. God says, you are making me serve with your sins. And then he goes on and says, and thou has wearied me with thine iniquities. So fat is a symbol of sin and iniquity. Mm -hmm. 
sacrifices being made without putting away the fact. Have mercy. Peace. Go to the next one. So, fat is a symbol of what? Of sin. Sin. And sin is a transgression of the what? Of the law. Of the law. All right. So notice, all who reject God's plan of salvation, mm. all who reject God's plan of salvation, in the everlasting gospel of Christ and his righteousness shall be as fat. Because through the righteousness of Christ, you're supposed to have victory over sin. Through the righteousness of Christ, you are developed a Christ-like character. Amen. Amen. Through the righteousness of Christ, you're supposed to have the fruits of the Spirit. Amen. Jesus said, by their fruits, you I will know them. them. Now, I've noticed how I said it. I said, I will know them. Jesus not judging you. Jesus not looking at you based on your talent. He's not looking on you based on your education. He's not looking upon you based on your position in the church. He's looking on you as I. you gave your life to me. What year? And how many years did you have to develop my character? How many years did you have to become like me? Why have you not become like me? What did I do to you that would hinder you from developing my character? This is the question that God is asking. He's not concerned about just sacrifices. He said, I get weary of the sacrifices of the animals and all that stuff in the Old Testament. He says, well, I'm looking for, I'm looking for my redemption. I'm looking for my seed. I'm looking for somebody that has, uh, looks like me, Amen. talks like me, Amen. walks like me. I'm looking for somebody who's become a living word. Why have you wearied me with your prayers? Why you won't make the sacrifice? Because you say it's inconvenient. Because you say, that's not me. You're right, it's not you, it's me. Oh, why can't you do it? Oh, why call me Lord and do not the things I tell you? I want you to see. Isaiah 65. I am sought of them that asked not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, Behold me, behold me, unto a nation that was not called by my name. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people, which walketh in a way that was not good, after their own thoughts, a people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face, that sacrificeth in gardens and burneth incense upon altars of brick, which remain among the graves, and lodge in the monuments, which eat swine's flesh, and broth of abominable things is in their vessels, which say, Stand by thyself, come not near to me, for I am holier than thou. These are a smoke in my nose, a fire that burneth all the day. Behold, it is written before me, I will not keep silence, but will recompense, even recompense into their bosom. Your iniquities and the iniquities of your fathers together, saith the Lord, which have burned incense upon the mountains and blasphemed me upon the hills. Therefore will I measure their former work into their bosom. Thus saith the Lord, As the new wine is found in the cluster, and one saith, Destroy it not, for a blessing is in it, so will I do for my servants' sakes, that I may not destroy them all. And I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob, and out of Judah an inheritor of my mountains and mine elect shall inherit it, and my servants shall dwell there. And Sharon shall be a fold of flocks, and the valley of Accor a place for the herds to lie down in, for my people that have sought me. But ye are they that forsake the Lord, that forget my holy mountain, that prepare a table for that troop, and that furnish the drink offering unto that number. Therefore will I number you to the sword, and ye shall all bow down to the slaughter, because when I called, ye did not answer. When I spake, ye did not hear, but did evil before mine eyes, and did choose that wherein I delighted not. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed.
Behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart, and shall howl for vexation of spirit. And ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen. For the Lord God shall slay thee, and call his servants by another name, that he who blesseth himself in the earth shall bless himself in the God of truth, and he that sweareth in the earth shall swear by the God of truth, because the former troubles are forgotten, and because they are hid from mine eyes. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered, nor come into mind. But be ye glad and rejoice for ever in that which I create, for behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing, and her people a joy. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem, and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not filled his days. For the child shall die an hundred years old. But the sinner, being an hundred years old, shall be accursed. And they shall build houses, and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards, and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build, and another inhabit. They shall not plant, and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble, for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord, and their offspring with them. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer, and while they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock, and dust shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, saith the Lord. There's nothing I can do And yet here I stand To offer all I am And give myself completely, Lord, to you Take my I can do make my 
John 3. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, Ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. After these things came Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea, and there he tarried with them and baptized. And John also was baptizing in Anon near Salim, because there was much water there, and they came and were baptized. For John was not yet cast into prison. Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizeth, and all men come to him. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except to be given him from heaven. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom which standeth and heareth him rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly, and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he hath seen and heard, that he testifieth, and no man receiveth his testimony. He that hath received his testimony hath set to his seal that God is true. For he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God, for God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hand. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life but the wrath of God abideth on him. A Voluntary Sacrifice The Preaching of Jesus Christ According to the Revelation of the Mystery Kept Secret Since the World Began 
Romans 16, verse 25. The plan for our redemption was not an afterthought, a plan formulated after the fall of Adam. It was a revelation of the mystery which hath been kept in silence through times eternal. It was an unfolding of the principles that from eternal ages have been the foundation of God's throne. From the beginning, God and Christ knew of the apostasy of Satan and of the fall of man through the deceptive power of the apostate. God did not ordain that sin should exist, but he foresaw its existence and made provision to meet the terrible emergency. So great was his love for the world that he covenanted to give his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This was a voluntary sacrifice. Jesus might have remained at the Father's side. He might have retained the glory of heaven and the homage of the angels. But he chose to give back the scepter into the Father's hands and to step down from the throne of the universe that he might bring light to the benighted and life to the perishing. Nearly two thousand years ago, a voice of mysterious import was heard in heaven from the throne of God. Lo, I come. Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. Lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. In these words is announced the fulfillment of the purpose that had been hidden from eternal ages. Christ was about to visit our world and to become incarnate. He says, A body hast thou prepared me. Had he appeared with the glory that was his with the Father before the world was, we could not have endured the light of his presence. That we might behold it and not be destroyed, the manifestation of his glory was shrouded. His divinity was veiled with humanity, the invisible glory in the visible human form. So Christ set up his tabernacle in the midst of our human encampment. He pitched his tent by the side of the tents of humanity, that he might dwell among us and make us familiar with his divine character and life. The desire. John 5. After this there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie, and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man, when the water is troubled, to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed, and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. He answered them, He that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up thy bed, and walk. Then asked they him, What man is that which said unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? And he that was healed wist not who it was, for Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. 
Afterward Jesus findeth him in the temple, and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. The man departed, and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus, and sought to slay him, because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. But Jesus answered them, My father worketh hitherto, and I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these, that ye may marvel. For as the Father raiseth up the dead, and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son, that all men should honour the Son, even as they honour the Father. He that honoureth not the Son, honoureth not the Father which hath sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice, and shall come forth, they that have done good, unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil, unto the resurrection of damnation. I can of mine own self do nothing, As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another that beareth witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesseth of me is true. Ye sent unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth. But I receive not testimony from man, but these things I say, that ye might be saved. He was a burning and a shining light, and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. But I have greater witness than that of John, for the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do, bear witness of me that the Father hath sent me. And the Father himself which hath sent me hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. And ye have not his word abiding in you. For whom he hath sent, him ye believe not. Search the Scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. I receive not honour from men, but I know you, that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. How can ye believe which receive honour one of another, and seek not the honour that cometh from God only? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? In St. Matthew's Gospel, the twelfth chapter, I read with verse 30, He that is not with me is against me. And if you have the red letter edition, you see that all of these are the words of Christ. He that is not with me is against me. 
So many want to have it both ways. They want to hold on to him and the world at the same time. It cannot be. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Now any sin that is not covered means death to the sinner. If that's clear, say amen. amen. What is sin? We've given you a Bible definition. 1 John 3, 4, sin is the transgression of the law. That's what it is. And any sin that remains with us until death or the judgment is a sin that will destroy us. Sin is a condition of the heart. I read of a man once who owned a very valuable clock. He guarded it jealously. And one day he noticed the clock was not keeping time. And he didn't want to carry his expensive clock to the repair shop. He was afraid they would steal some parts from it. And so it occurred to him, after all, the hands are the things that don't keep time. So he just pulled the hands off and took them to the repair shop. When he opened up the napkin, the man said, but where's the clock? He said, well, these hands don't keep the right time. I brought them to you. The man said, fella, if you want your clock fixed, you got to bring me the heart. Amen. The Bible says out of the heart are the issues of life. Out of the heart produce or proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemy. They come out of the heart. And when the Bible speaks of the heart, it's generally talking about the mind. As a man thinketh in his what? Heart, so is he. You don't think with this. You think with this. A man's heart, generally, in Scripture, refers to the mind. And the Bible says, out of the heart proceed evil thoughts. Evil thoughts. Sometimes you have to just cry unto the Lord to cleanse your mind of evil thoughts. I mean, some of the best Christians have this problem. I heard an old preacher say one day, you can't stop birds from flying over your head, but you can keep them from building a nest in your hair. If these thoughts come, don't let them stay there. Shoo them away by the power of God. Out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders. And remember, Jesus said you don't actually have to kill. If you hate, you're a murderer. All right. Huh? And then adulteries. All of this filth starts up here. I've known people to get into a jam, and when you talk to them, they say, Pastor, I wasn't thinking. Yes, you were. It starts here. You thought about it until you convinced yourself to try it. Fornication. That's not only the filth that one does, but it's watching it on television. And I want to tell you now, there are things on television that a self-respecting dog should not watch. Out of the heart come thefts, false witness, that's lying, and blasphemies. That text is Matthew 15 and verse 19. Now all have what? Sin. Sin. And come short of the glory of God. I'm so glad to tell you tonight the good news. That God wants us to overcome sin and he wants us to confess them. And he says, if you do, I will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You know, some people don't ever want to forgive. But God forgives. And if God takes it away, you're clean. I don't care what it is. If God takes it away, you are clean. The Bible declares that. And thank God for it. In Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 18, God says, come now. Let us reason together. Now, can you imagine the great God of heaven talking to a no-good sinner and saying to him, Come now, let us reason together. As though he were some 
important person. God says, come now. Let us reason together. The Japanese Bible says, come now. Let's argue this thing out. Let's look at all sides. And I don't care how sweet sin is, when you start to look at it, you will discover that it is poison and will destroy your soul. It ends up in hell. Sin self-destructs. Sin can never succeed. So God says now, come, let's be reasonable. You're not going anywhere with this. You might enjoy it for a while, but it will get you. Be sure your sins will find you out. Come now, let us reason together. That text I gave you is 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all. How much? What does all mean? Every bit. You know, I, uh, I hear people trying to put their finger on the unpardonable sin. Some say it's, it's uh, murder. Another says, no, it's, uh, it's uh, matricide. They try to think of the worst thing they can think of, killing your own mother. That's matricide. Oh, no, no, no. They say it must be infanticide, killing your baby. I tell you the truth. When you see what was done in Oklahoma City, you wonder how a man like that can be forgiven. And yet the Bible says if we confess our sins, if we can be brought to repentance, God says he is faithful and just to cleanse us of all unrighteousness and all has to mean all so is suicide the unpardonable sin that's the one you hear most often I have to answer technically no it is not I can point you to a man in the Bible who committed suicide by pulling down the temple of Dagon on himself his name was Samson but if you go to Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 32, in that same verse, you have Gideon and David and Samuel. And so Samson is named with those giants of the faith. He actually killed himself. Now, don't you misunderstand me. You're taking a slim chance committing suicide. I don't recommend it. Usually when a person comes to that, he has lost faith. He's given up hope. And the Bible says, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Would you say amen out there? Amen. The just shall live by faith. A lady told me about two weeks ago, she wanted to kill herself because she has so many troubles and so many trials. I'm talking to her on the phone. And I said, but darling, that doesn't help anything. If you kill yourself, you go to sleep and you're unconscious. I don't care if it's 10 years. To you, there's no consciousness of the passing of time. In the next instant, you hear the voice of God calling the dead to life. And you've got to meet him in the judgment. It'll be worse then than now. Amen. Suicide doesn't settle anything. Well, let's see if we can get to the bottom of this. There are two kinds of sin I want to highlight this evening. There is the sin of omission. Say that for me. Omission. And it's simple. These are theological terms, but it's simple. And the sin of commission. What is that? Omission. omission and commission. What does it mean? Omission means not doing or omitting to do what God tells you to do. A lot of folk are going to die and go to hell because of the sin of omission. They didn't really do a lot of bad things. They just didn't do right. Now, the sin of commission means to commit wrong. One is not to do right, the other is to do wrong. You know, people have the impression in order to be lost, they've got to rob a bank or rape somebody or take somebody's life. No, you don't. The easiest way to go to hell is just sit down and fold your arms and do nothing and you'll make it. The sin of omission. A lot of good people. Just decide, I'm not going to do this. I, 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 I give money and I visit the sick and I sing and I pray and I teach, but this I'm not going to do. That's the sin of omission, leaving undone what God tells you to do. Now, the sin of commission is, of course, the sin of doing wrong. In Romans 2 and verse 13, write it down, especially those who want to bring Paul into conflict with himself create a dichotomy between Paul and Paul. 
In Romans chapter 2 and verse 13, Paul says, For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Would you say amen? amen. And in this case, Paul is talking about the moral law of God, and he makes it very clear. This is the Bible. This is not Brooks. This is not some denominational idea. Paul says, not by hearers. And there are folk who will come and hear the truth over and over. As a matter of fact, I've gone into towns where some preacher 20 years ago preached God's truth and the same folk are still outside. And they'll love to tell me, you know, I heard Pastor so-and-so preach this 20 years ago. What are you doing? Well, no, but I enjoy. Enjoy? <laughs> and even if Jesus doesn't come soon, life is uncertain. At best, you got about three score years and ten. Makes no sense at all. The Bible goes on to tell us, not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers. And the implication is, there is power from above to do. Don't tell me you can't be true to your wife. Yes, you can. Your problem is not whether you can. Your problem is whether you want to. Whether you will to do it. Let me tell you, there is a God in heaven who answers prayer. And if you want to be straight, he'll give you the power to be straight. Yes, that is a part of the grace of God. So there's no excuse not to do his will because all his biddings are enablings. Every time he asks you to do something, he has already supplied the power. Now Jesus' blood can cleanse all sin except the one we call unpardonable. And I've read it to you this, morning, this afternoon, this evening. Now there are circumstances under which men sin. And God is so good, he even takes that into consideration. There is the circumstance of ignorance. People do wrong, don't know any better. That's why he sends folk like me around to tell them. Amen. Acts 17, 30 says, And the times of this ignorance God winks at. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Why now? Because the truth has come now. Before you heard it, he winked at it. But he knew your heart, and you wanted to hear it, and he sent it to you. Then you've got to make a decision. If you decide I'm not going to do it, there's no more winking on the part of God. You are responsible. And I tell you, I tell you unabashedly, everybody who has come to this meeting here and heard the Word of God, and even those who wouldn't come because they were scared they were here, the Word of God, are going to be judged by God for the knowledge they have rejected. The Bible says so. Hosea 4, 6, if you'd like a text. Ladies and gentlemen, this is serious business we're talking about. Some people sin through ignorance. God winks at it. Then there is the sin of passion. You, 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 you. People can vex you. Sometimes even the saints can get on your nerves. I mean on your last nerve. And there are times when you just are overwhelmed. Like when Peter pulled a sword and cut off a man's ear. Overwhelmed. God is apparently not so severe against that, even though it is wrong. So we have the sin of ignorance and the sin of passion. If you're a Christian at all, when you lose your temper at home, Immediately your conscience tells you you shouldn't have done that and your head begins to drop and you you want to go and get it right But then and don't miss this We're beginning now to define truth Here is the most dangerous sin of all the most dangerous sin of all is deliberate sin That's sinning even though you know that's sinning even though the truth has come. That's sinning presumptuously. That's sinning against light. Deliberate sin is the most dangerous one of all. It is called iniquity in God's word. Ladies and gentlemen, you'd better be careful there. David was a man after God's own heart. 
but David did some awful things. And he quickly repented and God said, he's a man after mine own heart. But look at Psalm 19 and verse 13. David said, Lord, keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sin. That means deliberate sin. Keep me from that one. Then shall I have, then sin will not have dominion over me. And I shall be innocent of the great transgression. Now don't you go around thinking there are little sins and big ones and maybe the big one I'll shun and the little. No, 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 no. We've got to overcome all sin. But there is a sin that is worse than any other. This man David said, Lord, keep me from presumptuous sin. Sin against light. Sin against the voice of God. Sin against the word of God. Keep me from that. I'm going to make enough mistakes. Human weakness is going to throw me a time or two. But please, Lord, keep me from deliberate, presumptuous sin. Let that kind not have dominion over me. Then shall I be innocent of the great transgression. Oh, please listen. This is my prayer tonight. In the book of Numbers, chapter 15, let me turn to it and read it to you. The Bible says in Numbers, chapter 15, and I'm going to read verses 30 and 31. Listen to what the Bible says. Numbers, chapter 15, verses 30 and 31. Listen, it says, but that soul or the soul that doeth aught presumptuously. How? The soul that doeth aught, that means anything, presumptuously. Whether he be born in the land or a stranger, the same reproacheth the Lord. And that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Because he hath despised the word of the Lord and hath broken his commandment. That soul shall be cut off. His iniquity shall be upon him. Strong, yes. Solemn, yes. The soul that does it deliberately despises the word. Do we have any idea what a privilege it is to know the Word of God? Amen. Do we have any idea in a world of confusion when men take one text and shut their Bibles and the rest of it comes from them to have a chance to listen to the Word of God text after text, the Bible supporting and strengthening itself? Do we have an idea what a privilege that is? Amen. The Bible says when a man deliberately commits sin, he despises the word. That means he doesn't value it. He doesn't care about it. And God said that soul will be cut off. In Hebrews chapter 6, verses 4 to 6, this is a text in the New Testament that almost makes you tremble. The book of Hebrews chapter 6, and I'm going to verse 4. Listen to what it says. For if we sin willfully, I want to turn to it. I want you to watch me read it. For if we sin willfully, where am I here? Hebrews chapter 6, I want. I'm in chapter 4. Forgive me. Verse 4. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away, to renew them again unto repentance. Now the Bible uses a strong word. It is impossible. If they have been enlightened, while they were ignorant, God winked. But if they have been enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they fall away, it is impossible to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to open shame. Presumptuous sin, having heard the word, having been wooed by the Holy Ghost, have, having felt his divine impress, upon their hearts, having the conscience stirred. And then they drop out. The Bible says it's impossible. In Acts chapter 7 and verse 51, the apostle said, you stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, 
ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. Resist the Holy Ghost. Why is this sin so serious? I'll tell you why. Because of sin, the Son of God, the darling of heaven, came down here and suffered unspeakably. He was the target of every weapon of hell. He was mistreated from the cradle to the tomb. And yet he stayed in there in order to make a way for us to be saved. Now, ladies and gentlemen, he went back to heaven and left the Holy Spirit here as his representative. And the Holy Spirit is trying to get us to evaluate correctly all that Christ went through and show love and appreciation for what Jesus has done for us. And if you decide, I'd rather have my sin, you are saying all that Christ went through is not worth my little sin. And the Holy Ghost can't stand that. This is what grieves him. This is what offends him. David went a long way from God's word. But in Psalm 51 and verse 11, he pleaded with God, Take not thy spirit from me. Oh, tonight we all ought to pray that. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 19, Paul wrote to the church, Quench not the spirit. Quench not the spirit. What does that mean? One writer said, when you are thirsty and you drink water, it quenches your thirst. Am I right? So that you don't feel thirst anymore. It's gone. You can keep sinning until you can't feel the impress of God's Spirit. You can't hear the voice of God in your conscience. Honestly, the Holy Spirit doesn't leave us. We leave Him. In Genesis chapter 6, God is talking to Noah. He told him to build an ark. He said, because these people have gone too far. And in verse 3, God said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. You keep on doing it. Repeated transgression. Doing it over. Headlong, headstrong, rebellion. You keep doing it. And one day, known only to God, the Holy Spirit will go and not come back. And that is unpardonable. Amen. Suppose a young man...
Luke 4 And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan, and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, That man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil, taking him up into an high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And he brought him to Jerusalem, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Esaias. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down. And the eyes of all of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all bare him witness, and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And he said unto them, Ye will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. And he said, Verily I say unto you, No prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you of a truth, Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land. But unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto Sarepta, city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elias the prophet, and none of them was cleansed, saving name in the Syrian. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath, and rose up, and thrust him out of the city and led him unto the brow of the hill whereon their city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. But he, passing through the midst of them, went his way, and came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath days. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. And in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil, and cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone, what have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him, 
and hurt him not. And they were all amazed, and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power he commandeth the unclean spirits, and they come out. And the fame of him went out into every place of the country round about. And he arose out of the synagogue, and entered into Simon's house. And Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever, and they besought him for her. And he stood over her, and rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she arose, and ministered unto them. Now when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with divers diseases brought them unto him, and he laid his hands on every one of them, and healed them. And devils also came out of many, crying out and saying, Thou art Christ, the Son of God. And he, rebuking them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was Christ. And when it was day, he departed, and went into a desert place. And the people sought him, and came unto him, and stayed him, that he should not depart from them. And he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also, for therefore am I sent. And he preached in the synagogues of Galilee. Isaiah 58. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily, and delight to know my ways, as a nation that did righteousness, and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast ye find pleasure, and exact all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast, and an acceptable day to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I have chosen, to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free? and that ye break every yoke. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh, then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy rearward. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity, and if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noonday. And the Lord shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul in drought, and make fat thy bones, and thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, 
and shalt honour him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it.